There are three ways I have destroyed my happiness, well-being and even success and uh, and my biggest lessons from doing that. Uh, I, if I see myself in my history, I've always been a smart, I've always been a studious, hardworking and intelligent person, right? Somebody who has taken pride in their intelligence with their IQ, right? I grew up learning, uh, loving maths. Uh, I became an engineer uh, and uh, nothing wrong with that, right? You might say what is wrong and in fact, society uh, praises and rewards you for being smart. My right? society rewards those who can remember well, who can uh, think well analytically, and who who become engineers, scientists, and so on. And right, and I have been rewarded as well. Uh, I am where I am in in my life because of uh, those skills. Right, so nothing wrong with that. And I have been rewarded for those skills as well. And and this video is not an argument against being intelligent or being hardworking. Or, or being smart, right? Um, at the same time, right? Another thing which is which is very true if I if I look back at my experience is that I have never been truly at peace and uh, never been truly happy in this moment, right? And I've always felt that success was just a few years ahead or a few weeks ahead. I've even though that desire to work hard, that desire to be smart has always brought me success and achievements. In the moment when I was going through life, it has always felt like success is something just ahead. And the moment I would even achieve something, I would simply get busy for the next thing, for the next big milestone. Uh, so in a moment, I have never learned to be at peace and happy for most of my life. And I have always felt that success is at the next corner rather than right now. Uh, and this video is my about my three big lessons, right, from the last uh, four decades of my life, and how how I came in my in the way of my own happiness, well-being, and success. So the first way that uh, I I came in my own way is uh, is wanting to be right and proving others wrong, because I I learned a lot, I knew a lot in terms of knowledge, or information, or reading books, or understanding like very difficult and complex subjects like like science, electronics, computers, I got my sense of who I am from how smart I was, from how um, much I knew and from how right I was, right? So every time I would be in a conversation, I would get a high from proving myself right and uh, which means that I would also get a high from proving, proving somebody else wrong, right? Or proving something else wrong. And uh, I proved myself right or I proved myself better than others. However, beyond that high, I was never happy because I was constantly seeking that. I was constantly seeking that to be okay with myself. And even worse, the very act of proving oneself right and proving somebody else wrong, it destroyed my relationships or that certainly did not work for my relationships. That certainly did not work for my my friendships and the people who were closest to me. I was suffering, I was making them suffer and I was taking away the joy and the fun of uh, uh, any two people or a team being together, right? And and um, like one example is, right, the first time I became a manager, I almost told everybody where they are wrong and I expected them to be thankful towards me because I knew so much. So I, I, I got a promotion and I told everybody where they are wrong and how to fix that. And what happened was nobody was talking to me. And I was thinking like, I'm being smart, I'm being super smart, I'm helping everybody. But I couldn't see that, like that very act, proving myself better or right or using my intelligence, took away all the fun in relationships and people were like feeling resentful. And I had no idea why that was a huge blind spot for me. And what I learned from, uh, uh, from these experiences, and I still get stuck sometimes in these traps, is that you can either be right or you can be happy. Let me say that again. You can either be right or you can be happy. You can either be right or you can have happy relationships. And if I am proven wrong or if I am wrong, then that has nothing to do with my sense of worth or my happiness or having a good relationship, right? And the thing was that I have prioritized being right over everything else in my life. I have prioritized proving my smartness and extension proving somebody else's lack of smartness above, over and above everything else in my life. And even though that brought me success and achievements, 
that sucked all the happiness and joy out of my life both internally inside me and but certainly also very very clearly in the relationships that i was having so what is if you ask me what is different now because i still have that temptation i still have uh, and fall into that trap from every now and then what is different now is that now i am more aware of this i am aware of this as a pattern of mine so i catch myself right so when i am in a conversation i catch myself that i am tempted to bring in this data point to bring in that argument to talk about that research and uh, and to prove myself right uh, and I, i can argue i can talk about a topic uh, and lead a conversation forward without it being meaning that i am right or the other person is wrong right i can simply move forward with my own objectives for the for the conversation for the team for the work that i am doing and what i saw with that like both my relationships and my results improved right doesn't it doesn't mean that uh, i cannot speak about my intelligence it doesn't mean that i cannot make a point it means that i make whatever point not to prove myself right not to get that high but in fact to move the conversation forward taking care of everybody else around me as well as i'm taking myself into consideration and that has worked out wonders for me right so first of all life is so much simpler and it saves so much time so much effort and so much energy emotional energy both mine and in the relationships uh, because otherwise i would get into conflicts or i would get into disagreements and then i would spend time apologizing or fixing those relationships rather than moving forward uh, and now because i can simply slow down i can stop myself in the in the tracks before i do the damage uh, and then i can make my point with calmness uh, and still move the conversation up ahead it's like i am saving so much time effort and energy in the long run the second way right the second way that my own intelligence came in my own way is um, i wanted to control everything i wanted to make everything orderly because of that intelligence and the engineer's way of looking at things i wanted to make everything orderly using my brain and which led me to endlessly plan things ahead to the minute detail to give you an example right if i were to go on a vacation earlier i would plan every day i would plan like uh, every half a day every two hours uh, i would plan the public transport i would i would plan like in detail so much to make sure that i know everything when i walk into a city i kind of already know everything and that and through that process i i got a high just like like uh, proving myself right wanting to be in control or trying to know everything and how the pieces fit together gave me a big high what it cost me is that it sucked up all my time it sucked up a huge amount of time from doing things that i actually wanted to do or make progress in and to spend time with my family with other relationships with other people around me i was always in my head i was always working hard doing something and just missing this moment right this very right very moment the person in front of me i was missing everything around me by planning for the future can you see how paradoxical that sounds always planning for the future but missing the only moment in front of you and even when the future arises i'm not here i'm still planning for the next day right even when i'm going on a vacation i have planned my day now instead of enjoying day 1 i am already in my mind thinking about the day 2 so i'm never here i'm never present I'm, and that took a big toll i started to live in my head rather than in real life what i learned from this experience is that life is wild right life is uncertain that's by design that's not a problem of life right uncertainty is not something which i have to fix uncertainty is something which i can enjoy i can let things happen i can enjoy the spontaneity and then i can plan i can structure things when i need to but not always not as a temptation if something would go wrong i would take it very personally so even if something is going wrong now it's it's like it's not happening to me like this is life happening it's not personal like and we suffer when we think that something is happening and i have to fix it i have to overcome it or i can simply like dance with it i can simply use whatever is happening and still move forward right and another thing that i realized that right we don't have to control or manipulate life life is just going to happen 
and life and other people and situations and cities are not conspiring against us when things don't unfold the way that we have planned it to right life is just happening it's neutral it's not personal and the moment you see that it is if there is a tremendous amount of relief and almost uh, a sigh that you can take and and similarly right people people do not hate us people do not get angry at us people do not deceive us people are not indifferent uh, at us they, they are just happening right everybody is dealing with their own thing right so whatever you think about your boss about your spouse about your neighbor about uh, your child about your father about your parents they are not doing that to you it's it's just happening it's just life unfolding so if it rains and you get wet the rain is not out there to get you right the rain's purpose is not to make you wet that's not personal that's just rain similarly whenever life happens or whenever people do whatever they do it's not about you it's impersonal it's it's neutral it's chaotic that's life right life is wild right like rather than trying to control it which would take everything out of me and still not give me anything i simply learned and embraced like this is happening all of this is happening i might not like it but it's not personal it's it's not against me it's just happening and i can simply play one role in that whole process rather than trying to get everything orchestrated the way i wanted to the third lesson right the third big lesson that that i i learned is that because of uh, because of these patterns i was always waiting for something or someone in the future to be happy and to somebody to come and help and solve my problems and i have waited for money i have waited for titles like if when i was working in in the corporate world i have waited for titles uh, i have waited for age like i have waited for to become 30 years old or to become 35 years old before i can do that i have waited for like months or weeks like i will do that next week i will do that next month i'll do that next year uh, and uh, everything almost became conditional on waiting for something or waiting for somebody in my life right uh, like i will do this i will fix my life i will go after my dreams only some day only after this happens and i have waited for my manager to do something differently before i can take up responsibility before i can start showing up in a certain way and uh, that always became a wonderful reason to first of all uh, like not uh, make uh, myself happy to suffer internally uh but then also to not make any any progress in in life or in areas which matter to me and like another thing which which we are told from society is that uh, hope is good right and and some kind of help is is coming right we we are told that others will help us we are told that uh, others will step up and uh, that almost leaves uh, you or at least in my case almost uh, left me feeling entitled and waiting for others to show up before i could show up and not realizing that i can show up whenever i want to show up without waiting for anything else or anybody else and living that way waiting for somebody to come and rescue me somebody to come and fix me and somebody to do their part before i can do my part sucked all life out of me right that just became an excuse to not taking ownership of uh, what i wanted from my life what results i wanted to produce and my biggest lesson was when uh, when one of my coaches told me like in no uncertain terms that nobody is coming to save you one of my coaches told me face to face eye to eye nobody is coming to save you and i realized that waiting for somebody or something or some ideal time only waste the current moment and sucks life out of the only place life ever exists which is this current moment so i want to say it very clearly and say it very bluntly like nobody is coming to save you whatever it is that you're dealing with whatever good or bad situation that you are in deal with it right uh, stop waiting for uh, problems to go away or other people to step up or or life to change or unfold in a way that you want to instead of all of that simply step up stop waiting there's nobody who is coming there's nothing which will happen in the future that will make you ready you are ready right now step up take ownership take different action and start making progress in whichever area that matters to you right when you take action immediate action leads to momentum while waiting only leads to resentment 
Waiting leads to despair. Hoping but not acting leads to despair over a period of time. It leads to giving up. While immediate action, even if it fails, leads to momentum, leads to energy, leads to excitement. And that action also includes holding others accountable. When we own up and take action, we also hold others accountable more, not less. Right? And many times we are waiting for others to take up responsibility, but we don't hold them accountable. If we can take our part of the ownership, that gives us more authority, that gives us more natural energy to hold other people accountable without blaming them, without putting them down, but simply leading from example, then that's playing together rather than against each other. So when you stop hoping, when you stop waiting, when you stop expecting life or people to show up the way that you want to, you can actually start living in the now. And you can start experiencing happiness. You can start experiencing progress, momentum, ambition, and so much more. And I want you to listen to this video again, in fact, multiple times. Because everything that I have spoken about today has taken me decades to really get it in my bones, really understand it. And uh, also, this is something which you never reach the end of the journey. I don't think these patterns will ever go away. The only thing I can do is to notice when I am stuck in these patterns, become aware and then do something differently. Because if I am not even aware, then I have no choice in the matter. Then it, it's like, like this pattern of being right, proving myself is running me rather than I running a strategy, right? So it's it's not like I am working hard, but hard work is is working me. Like that's what is happening. It's not like I am choosing when to plan or not to plan. Like the, the temptation to plan is so huge that it has taken me under its umbrella, so to say. Right. So listen to this multiple times to really get how this could be applicable in your life. And as you listen, as you watch this multiple times, ask yourself, how is this applicable in my life? Right? Don't watch this about me. Right? There is no value for you about, about uh, knowing about my story if you don't apply it in your life. So ask yourself, how is this applicable in my life? Ask yourself, what can I do differently in those areas? And I bet you, your life will not be the same again. I can bet you that if you can start applying this in small little little areas, things will change so dramatically, you have no idea that can happen. All right? And whenever that happens, do reach out to me and let me know that uh, this video made an impact. It makes a big difference to, to all of us to know that uh, this is actually making a big difference in the world. So thank you for listening. Listen to this multiple times and reach out if it proves helpful or useful in any scenario, any real scenario in your life.